Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. Today I'm going to be exploring um, something that isn't actually available on the GIMP but it's something that's available on Photoshop and it's called the clipping mask and a lot of people have been asking me how to um, achieve the same effect as you might achieve with the clipping mask on the GIMP so today we're going to have a look at one of the ways um, you can make this kind of image uh, using something that would appear on Photoshop using the clipping mask but we're going to have to use a workaround to achieve it and um, there are lots of other ways you can use a clipping mask you'll see a lot of people um, use it to do the same sort of thing but with text instead of um, just a simple black image that we'll be using today um, but basically the effects the same and the techniques the same so you can kind of apply it to whatever patterns you're going to use okay so the first thing we're going to need to do is open up uh, the images that we want to work on so we're going to go to file and open as layers and we're just going to select our images so here I have a picture of the Melbourne skyline and I'm just going to open up another image in the background and so again open as layers and I'm just going to use a picture of the Australian flag now my Australian flag is actually a little bit too big at the moment so I'm just going to make sure I have this selected uh, this layer selected and simply go to layer and scale layer and I'm going to make it the same size as my image size now my image size at the moment is the same size as the original or the first picture that I put in so I'm just going to make it 800 by 536 so we can just do that by typing that in here and I need to unbreak this so it doesn't change and just change that by two pixels there so that's nice and easy and then when we press scale you'll see that that's exactly the same size okay so we've got our first layer is um, the Mel uh, Melbourne skyline and then on top of that we have the, the flag. Now I'm just going to switch both of those off for a moment and open up a new transparent layer and you'll see that that's already the right size and it's already selected as transparent but if it's not you just click on transparency down here and that's not it doesn't look any different because it's a transparent layer um, but what we're going to do is make a pattern um, which we're going to use as our clipping mask or our pretend clipping mask. So what I'm going to do now is on this um, transparent layer I'm going to select my paintbrush and for the brush I'm going to pick one of the um, kind of splatter effect looking brushes. Now I do have a set of splatter brushes that are a lot more complex than this but this is one of the ones that comes with the GIMP by default so everybody should have this one available. So if you click on this one here uh, and you can see the name of the brush is Galaxy AP if that's the one that you're looking for okay and then you can very faintly make out the um, this sort of shape of the brush I've got there but with a black brush basically I'm just gonna put some random splatter effect over this okay and I want to give it a fairly even coverage and um, but I want to make sure I leave plenty of transparency as well okay so I'll just quickly do that uh, I'm just gonna make sure I've got pay particular attention to some of the edges just because I think that usually leaves us with a, a better aesthetic at the end um, but we'll just try and make it fairly even like this okay now if I um, switch one of my layers back on you can see that that gives us a kind of um, black effect um, almost like smoke um, and if I was to switch off the flag layer and do that over there um, you can see the same pattern in the background but it's not actually this black pattern that we're going to use we're just going to use this to generate a selection so I'm going to show you how to do that now so we're going to go back to our, um, our layer with the, the black pattern and what we need to do is turn the black area into a selection and we're going to use that to copy our original background layer later so we simply go to layer and transparency and then from the transparency menu we go down to alpha to selection and what that means is it's made all of the uh, transparent area of the image and the transparency is shown by the, the, the grey checked pattern all of the transparency in the image has become an active selection and we can tell it's an active selection because of the marching ants that go around the selected area from here we simply go to select and invert or we can use the shortcut key control and I and what that now does instead of the alpha channel being selected the black channel has been selected so it's reversed the properties of that selection kind of turned it inside out if you like now we can make this transparent again um, or invisible again because we don't need it and on this background layer which I'm just going to make visible 
you can see that even though I'm no longer on the new layer and I've no longer got it visible or anything like that, that the selection itself is still um, valid. It's still, you know, they're still marching ants. And now because we're on this layer, that selection actually applies to the image that we're looking at. So with this, if I was to now do something simple like go to edit and copy, um, or I could just press Control and C to copy that, and what it's actually done has selected and the portions uh, within the marching ants. So if I was to um, sim simply switch that layer off for a minute and press Control and V, what that's done is given as a floating selection, which we can't see at the moment. If I press, um, if I right-click that and press New Layer, you can see that it um, pastes only the area that we had selected from that original image, um, which is interesting because it gives us this. Um, this lovely kind of transparency in the background. And then if we paste this new layer, um, the one with the transparency, um, back over the top of the flag, or if we simply just make the flag underneath visible, you can see we get this great image of um, the Melbourne skyline sort of coming through uh, the Australian flag. Uh, and that's very simply how a clipping mask works. Um, you know, these two layers here that are invisible are now obsolete. We don't need those at all. Um, but we've used them to you know, create this kind of effect coming through. Now if I decided I didn't want the Australian flag in the background of that, well then very simply I could make that invisible and just open a new layer as the background. So I might pick something um, like this. So this was just taken on my roof. Now again, that's currently on top of the, the kind of clipping mask layer. So we just move that underneath it like this and you can see the way that that comes through. Um, so this isn't as powerful an image um, and I don't really like this pasted layer on top of there anymore. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to my uh, my new layer. Uh, this is the one where I made my original clipping mask. Uh, I'm going to go through the selection process again. So I go to sel um, layer and transparency and alpha to selection. Oh, sorry, I did that on the wrong layer. So you can see nothing was selected there because there's no transparency. Uh, so we just go to, we make sure we're on this layer. We go to layer, transparency, and alpha to selection. So we've selected that. We can press control and I to invert that selection. Now I'm gonna um, go to the, the brickwork um, or the rooftop image, and I'm gonna select that. So I'm gonna press control and C to copy that and then Control and V to paste it again as a new layer or a floating layer uh, and then go to new layer by right clicking it and then when we switch that off and put it back over the top of the flag um, we get that in the background and the final thing I'm going to do is actually just turn this into an image of the Union Jack with a, a kind of brick texture background um, so I can simply crop that and that gives us quite a cool effect as well. So if I just center that so you can see it and zoom in a little bit um, you can see that that gives us you know, quite a cool texture and we've still just used exactly the same technique as before you know, um, just playing with this clipping mask layer and using it to, to render an interesting selection and basically you'll see that in lots of um, scrapbooking tutorials or particularly digital scrapbooking um, and it's something that's used a lot in Photoshop but it's, um, I just thought I'd show you a, a quick workaround for the GIMP Anyway, I hope you found that useful and I hope that's answered a lot of the questions that I've had regarding clipping masks and I'll see you next time.